depths. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here at About Trout, I do fly fishing how-tos, gear reviews, um, some vlog stuff and some tying stuff. And I also have a guide service called About Trout. So I'm just a fishing guide who's used to being in front of a camera. I guess, um, but I hope with this channel to kind of share um, what I've learned uh, working on the river and you know, working in and out of fly shops for over half my life at 32 years young. Um, today what we're gonna tie is just a thread Frenchie, which is a million videos on that. Um, it's a Lance Egan pattern, but you know, when I'm tying pheasant tails and smaller beta sea patterns, especially for this kind of pre-runoff, you know, early spring fishing, um, I really like to fish them in the colorway I'm going to show you, which is just brown with a hot bead, um, and we're going to use some synthetic dubbing, obviously, instead of um, peacock curl. So it's a guide fly. Uh, we're adding to the series here. Uh, a super quick tie and way, way, way more durable um, than a pheasant tail. So something I really, really like to fish in free stones, um, especially this time of year. So I hope you guys dig it. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, let's just hop on the vise. All right, let's get up in the mix. In the vise, I have a falling mill uh, jig four short in size venti. That's 20 if you're at Starbucks. I have a 2.8 millimeter fluorescent orange bead loaded up on there. And I really like these jig four shorts because if I'm oversizing the bead like I am now, it does a great job in keeping that uh, bead on there. What I'm wrapping up right now is the Semperfly Nano Silk AT knot. And I always try to do these videos from a tire's perspective. So not only do I have a camera sitting in front of me, I have lights, but hey, we're rolling with the punches here. This is guide flies. I'm gonna go down, I don't know, a little past the midway point, try to build a taper. These fish aren't gonna care. Um, and that's the great thing about these guide flies. We're not here to enter these into fly tying competitions. These are just straight workhorses. Um, this combination, this color combo, I really like for like pre runoff when snow melts, spikes the river a little bit. So the water's dirty, it's got a little bit of pop. And just the thread Frenchie platform is just so durable, um, unless, you know, you get it hooked in a tree. So I'm gonna tie in the tails, some Coke de Leon. Uh, I'm gonna pull off anywhere from four to six fibers. I think I got four in here. Um, and I just dropped them on the floor. So we're gonna do that again. This is real world, man. This isn't Hollywood fly tying. This is raw, live, uncut. All right, so I got my four. I counted them correctly. I'm gonna put them over here. I'm gonna even the tips up off camera and um, just yank them. So I'm gonna measure out about oop, three quarters of a shank length. Bring this back. So with the tie-in point, which should just be kind of right where the barb would be. It's gonna be a little long, as you can see, so I'm just gonna grab all four fibers. And I think that's a hair long. Guys, I'm telling you, if it's not exactly proportional, these trout won't eat it. All right, that's good enough for me. I'll wrap this, boom, right back to the bead ski. That's a slang for bead, in case you, you uh, didn't pick up on that. All right, I'm gonna trap those in there, and I'm just honestly, because it's an oversized bead and I'm tying with 18 knot, I can really, you know, get away with tons of thread wraps, and I'm gonna trim those. All right, next step. Um, I'm just gonna use small black wire. I really like that black over brown kind of colorway. And betis, it, betis you know, that mayfly, they, uh, they, they get dark brown when they molt, or after they molt, or before they molt. Anyway, if there's betas in the system and they're growing and about ready to hatch, they're gonna be a darker brown. I've never actually fact-checked that, but it's something that I learned and heard from somebody I respect, so I'm just gonna parrot it and sound smart like I'm an entomologist. I like 18 knot too, especially doing stuff like this. It's so forgiving. So there's a real, real slim taper on there. Um, and I wrapped my thread under the tail to kind of prop it up a little bit. Again, none of this matters. Just tie flies, have fun. That's kind of, that's the motto over here. Now I'm gonna just rib this. Oh, which way do we wanna go? It, it doesn't matter. Although it is splitting my tail. 
That's gonna really irritate me. All right, there we go. Standing nice and proud. Now, uh, you could use the rotary feature and you're gonna get a way better even spiral, better segmentation, but I got a camera here, so I'm not gonna do it. All right. I'm just gonna trap that. Now, this, like I said, this is just a thread Frenchie. It's just this colorway that I really particularly like. I'm gonna helicopter that off. I, boom, there we go. 27th time is the charm. All right, I'm just gonna throw a couple more wraps. This 18 knot's awesome, because you can just, it, it does not build bulk. All right, now you should probably throw a whip finish in there for this step, but hey, this is, this is guy flies, baby. All right, so I'm just gonna dab it, and then I'm gonna make sure to really get up in the bead so it seats it when I cook it with the light. Um, you kind of you want those ribs to pop, so I'm just gonna come in here, kind of take this excess gunk off. It's hard to see on this camera, but maybe we can we can zoom in a little bit. Modern, the modern marvels of, uh, is it, does it let me do it? Oh, perfect. So yeah, zoomed in a little bit. Um, you can kind of see those ribs popping. Now we're gonna cook it with a light. Look at that UV. You can just, you can feel the trout moving across the river to eat this. All right, now that we cook that up, we're almost done. Uh, this is just a great, great beta fly. Um, to use early spring and I, I just love that hot bead especially for stained water so and all we're gonna do now is grab our hens dubbing in shade 46 I believe this is hens spectra and a lot of people you know don't like ice dub because it doesn't dub really tight and you can put it in a loop but ain't nobody got time for that so this what I love about the spectra is look at how tight that thing dubs I can even get it even tighter Oh, I thought so, but whatever. Guide flies, all right, boom. Tight little dubbing ball behind the collar. Isn't that a work of art? All right, now some Loctite super glue. Just kind of hit the thread a little bit because we want to make this durable after you catch a thousand fish on this one, two. Just, I just wrap enough to make sure those super glue beads kind of get right behind the bead and the dubbing. Um, and then we're just gonna grab our whip finish tool, plus five bonus points for loose loon tools. One, two, three, four, I think that was five. It doesn't matter, boom. That's locked. Come back in with the cutter. Ah, we cut it. All right, that's gonna drive me insane. Um, so I'm gonna just come up here and trim it like it, like it never happened. Look at that. Pat yourselves on the back. You have a thread Frenchie in an awesome Betis colorway. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and yeah, if you like stuff like this, let me know in the comments down below. Um, if I wasn't get yapping the whole time, you can knock these things out in like two minutes. So it's a great spring fly. It's a great dropper, although I probably, you know, wouldn't use a 2.8 millimeter tongue bead. But thank you so much, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video.